morning everyone in this video i have simplified the pathway of lipoprotein synthesis which will make it very easy to understand different types of hyperlipoproteinemia so let's get started i will also be discussing which synthomas occur in which type of hyperlipoproteinemia if you guys are new to my channel my name is dr namra aziz i am resident dermatology i make a lot of educational content don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notification you can also follow me on instagram at dr namra aziz first of all an important question would be what is a lipoprotein basically majority of the lipids in the plasma are in the form of a complex structure called as lipoproteins the basic structure of this lipoprotein allows the delivery of triglycerides and cholesterol to the peripheral cells for their metabolic needs the outer shell of lipoprotein is hydrophilic and is composed of phospholipids free cholesterol and non covalently linked specialized proteins known as apoproteins the inner core is hydrophobic and is composed of triglycerides and cholesterol esters lipoproteins differ in their inner core as well as the apoproteins which are expressed on their outer surfaces then what do we mean when we say very low density low density and high density lipoproteins what do we mean by density density of cholesterol or density of triglycerides well we are referring to the density of cholesterol esters very low density proteins have the lowest density of cholesterol esters and high density lipoproteins have the highest density of cholesterol esters In addition to this since very low density lipoproteins are low in cholesterol esters they are rich in triglycerides another group which is rich in triglycerides is tri chylomicrons so for a clear understanding the inner core of chylomicrons and vldl is rich in triglyceride while that of ldl hdl and remnants of the chylomicron and vldl which are also known as intermediate dens density lipoproteins is rich in cholesterol esters like i said before the apoproteins found in the outer shell can also differ amongst the various lipoproteins these apoproteins serve several important functions such as binding of lipoprotein to their respective receptors in the target organ and activating enzymes involved in their metabolism There are two pathways of lipoprotein synthesis exogenous and endogenous the exogenous pathway involves the ingestion of dietary fat and its conversion to lipoproteins on the other hand endogenous pathway starts when the liver makes vldl protein lipoproteins now let's start with the exogenous pathway the exogenous pathway begins with the dietary fat intake The triglycerides in the fatty diet are broken down by pancreatic lipase and bile acids into smaller fatty acids and monoglycerides. After the absorption from the intestinal epithelium, the triglycerides are formed again and are packaged with a very small amount of cholesterol esters to form chylomicrons. Like all of other lipoproteins, there will be apoproteins in the outer shell. Apoprotein in the outer shell of the chylomicron are B48, E A1, A2, and C2. If you are trying to grasp the concept of lipoprotein synthesis for the first time, you can skip remembering the names of these lipoproteins and remember them later. But of all of these, don't forget C2 and ApoE, because C2 is the primary apoprotein for the activation of lipoprotein lipase, and ApoE helps in binding to ApoB100 E receptor. The details of which I'll be discussing shortly. These chylomicrons enter into the lymphatics and eventually into the systemic circulation through the thoracic duct. Through the circulation they reach the peripheral tissue where hydrolysis of the core triglycerides occur releasing the free fatty acids to the peripheral tissues. This hydrolysis of triglycerides is caused by an enzyme called as lipoprotein lipase. The activation of this enzyme lipoprotein lipase is a complex process and involves not only hormones such as insulin but also apoproteins such as C2 a protein found on the endothelial cells also binds the lipoprotein lipase and moves it to the site of action after hydrolysis of approximately 70% of the original triglyceride content a chylomicron remnant exists the central core now predominantly contains cholesterol esters that have been acquired from the circulating hdl molecules 
The tylomicron remnant is taken up by the liver. It binds to the liver via B100E receptor. This receptor is also called as LDL receptor that recognizes the ApoE3 or ApoE4 on the outer shell of the chylomicron remnants. Once in the liver, the remaining lipids in the chylomicron remnants enter hepatic storage and apoproteins are degraded. The endogenous pathway begins with the formation of VLDL by the liver. Like I said before, the central core of VLDL is triglycerides, which are not obtained from an exogenous source such as diet, but an endogenous source such as hepatic triglycerides and circulating fatty acids. Hence the name endogenous pathway. Important apoproteins on the surface of VLDL are ApoB100, ApoE and ApoC2. Similar to the chylomicron, lipoprotein lipase mediates the hydrolysis of VLDL molecule, removing the majority of its triglyceride content by converting them to free fatty acids. And the cholesterol esters released from it are acquired by HDL molecules. Lipoprotein lipase activation requires the presence of ApoC2 on the VLDL outer shell. This is the same apoprotein which is present on the chylomicron and activates lipoprotein lipase. After the removal of the majority of triglyceride content, the VLDL remnant, also known as intermediate density lipoprotein, are formed. These can be taken up by the liver after binding to ApoB100 slash E receptors on the liver and are then degraded. A group of intermediate density lipoprotein escape this uptake by the liver and are stripped off their remaining core triglycerides by extracellular hepatic lipases and become LDL. At this point, we are done with the lipoproteins which are rich in triglycerides. LDL contains predominantly cholesterol esters in its central core and expresses B100 apoproteins on its surface. LDL delivers cholesterol esters to the peripheral tissues where it can be converted to free cholesterol. Cholesterol has important functions within the body including being an essential component of the cell membrane bilayers. It is also important in the production of the myelin sheet of the nerves, adrenal and gonadal steroidogenesis and the production of bile acids. Hepatocytes play the major role in the catabolism of LDLs. Their uptake is mediated through the high affinity ApoB100 slash E receptor found on the surface of the hepatocytes. This is the same receptor which is responsible for the uptake of the chylomicron remnants and intermediate density lipoproteins by the liver. So everything that has to enter the liver is through this receptor. Free cholesterol in excess of metabolic needs is re-esterified for the storage. High density lipoprotein serves several important functions in cholesterol metabolism. The main role of high density lipoprotein is to take excess cholesterol from the peripheral tissue and deliver them to intermediate density lipoprotein, very low density lipoprotein and chylomicron remnants so they can give it back to the liver. Free cholesterol and phospholipids are transferred from the cell membrane of the peripheral cells to the HDL molecule. The free cholesterol is then esterified by an enzyme called as LCAT. This enzyme requires the presence of apoprotein called as apoprotein A1 on high density lipoproteins. HDL molecules then transfer the cholesterol esters to the other lipoproteins such as LDL and remnants of chylomicrons or VLDL for its transportation back to the liver. So the main thing which has happened through this entire pathway is that the triglycerides have reached to the peripheral tissue to provide energy in the form of the free fatty acids and excess cholesterol is brought back to the liver. Now let's have a quick review of all the hyperlipoproteinemias. Type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia occurs due to the defect in enzymatic degradation of triglycerides by lipoprotein lipase. This occurs because of autosomal recessive mutation which leads to the deficient or abnormal lipoprotein lipase or deficiency in the apoprotein C2 which like I mentioned before has a role in lipoprotein lipase activation or the, de or the deficiency of an enzyme which is called as glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol anchored HDL binding protein which moves lipoprotein lipase to its place of action. Whatever the reason, when lipoprotein lipase isn't working, it, it will lead to the accumulation of chylomicrons as well as the triglyceride inside it leading to hypertriglyceridemia. Now remember when I said that lipoprotein lipase is also required for the hydrolysis of triglycerides from VLDL. Well, why the lipoprotein lipase isn't affected at this site in type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia, we don't know. 
but when wheel dl are elevated along with the chylomicrons it is classified as type 5 hyperlipoproteinemia and when wheel dl is elevated alone it is called as type 4 hyperlipoproteinemia so in summary type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia is due to defective degradation of triglycerides by lipoprotein lipase leading to the elevated chylomicrons type 4 lipoproteinemia is due to defective degradation of triglycerides at a different site leading to elevated very low density lipoproteins type 5 hyperlipoproteinemia is due to defective degradation of triglycerides at both sites leading to elevated very low density lipoproteins and chylomicrons since VLDL and chylomicrons are elevated in all of them which have an inner lipid core made up of triglycerides all of these result in hypertriglyceridemia and all the causes of hypertriglycerides can lead to eruptive xenthomas. Also, it's important to remember here that causes of hypertriglyceridemia will not increase the risk of atherosclerotic diseases, but an increase in the risk of recurrent pancreatitis. Now we are left with type 2 and type 3 hyperlipoproteinemias only. Type 2 hyperlipoproteinemia, also called as familial hypercholesterolemia, occurs due to the defective ApoB100 E receptor, which is also called as LDL receptor. Remember when I said that LDL, chylomicron, remnants, and IDL enter the liver through this receptor? Through this receptor. All of these guys cannot enter the liver, especially LDL, leading to elevated LDL. Since LDL is rich in cholesterol esters, this will lead to hypercholesterolemia. This defect in LDL or apoB 100-E receptor occurs with either due to autosomal dominant mutation in the genes that encode LDL receptor or a mutation that results in the decreased affinity of apoB 100 for apoB 100-E receptors or due to the excessive degradation of LDL receptors. All type of xenthomas are increased in the cases of hypercholesterolemia except for eruptive xenthomas which are associated with hypertriglyceridemia. So tendinous, tuberoeruptive, tuberous and plain xenthomas such as xenthelensmas and plain xenthomas of intertriginous and interdigital web spaces can occur. But plain xenthomas of interdigital web spaces are pathognomonic for homozygous state of familial hypercholesterolemia. Type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia called as also called as familial dis beta lipoproteinemia remnant removal disease or broad beta disease occurred due to defective apoe protein which is present on the chylomicron remnants and intermediate density lipoproteins these bind to apoe 100 e receptor on the liver vast majority of these patients express apoe2 instead of apoe3 or apoe4 which has decreased affinity for apoe 100 e receptor so when ApoE protein is defective, it leads to the accumulation of chylomicron remnants and IDLs. These are rich in cholesterol esters, hence, they would, hence there will be hypercholesterolemia, but also have triglycerides leading to hypertriglyceridemia, hence it is also called as mixed disease. Due to hypercholesterolemia, there will be tuberoeruptive, tuberous, tendinous and plain xenthomas. Plain xenthomas in palmar creases are considered to be most characteristic. Eruptive xenthomas can also occur sometimes because of hypertriglyceridemia. I think that's all for today. So for a quick review, type 1, type 4 and type 5 hyperlipoproteinemia lead to hypertriglyceridemia and eruptive xenthomas. Type 2 and type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia lead to hypercholesterolemia leading to tendinous, tuberous, tuberoeruptive and plain xenthomas. Interdigital web spaces xenthomas are characteristic for type 2 hyperlipoproteinemia. Palmer Cree xenthomas are said to be characteristic for type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia. Thank you so much for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notification. Also follow me on Instagram at Dr. Namra Aziz.